If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, and I have a special treat for you this week. I am here with my co my Monday co-host, Joshua Radawan, and I didn't have anybody scheduled for my Ascend call this week that I needed to do a reading for, and so I was like, hey, Josh, you want a reading? And he's like, yeah, I totally want a reading. And so what I've decided to do with this one is I want to, I want to... I want you guys to hear how the consultation process goes. So, you know, not everybody's going to want a full, you know, spiritual energetic, spiritual evolution energetic review, which is the, the long reads that you've heard me do through the chakras and everything. Um, so Josh uh, and I were talking about, I'm like, let's, let's talk about doing something a little different here because, you know, you get these readings all the time from the people who are being trained to be coaches in our system. And uh, so, you know, that's that's not normal, or that's that's not new, novel. Novel is the word I was looking for for you. So, you know, tell me a little bit about what you want to work on, and then we'll figure out what the right path is to take for that. Yeah, you can see I'm in a t-shirt today because it's casual Friday at the office. So, yeah, love it, love it. You know, so there's a lot of things shifting in my life right now. You know, like I've set some very clear intentions for the first time in my life, like really have a directed vision of what I want to create, uh, deep intention. It's funny, you know, you say it at the end of the podcast long enough, it even takes hold when I'm on the other side of it. So, <laughs> you know, I've spent so much time in, in meditation, be like, you know, my intention is to figure out why I, I can't set intentions. And I finally, I finally got to that place. But, uh, you know, like, so, you know, we're, we're getting ready for a, a house sale. There is a lot of uncertainty in my life. You know, the, the relationship, um, I, I am in is currently in a lot of, of, of turmoil, you know, if not really going in different directions. And so, you know, the, all of that being said, you know, like some of the, the things that have been really coming up for me is struggling with the concept of letting go. And this has always been something that has been very deep level for me, the, the let, letting go piece. And, you know, and we've talked about this on the back end too, is like, you know, the recognition of other people's behaviors and actions not being about me. You know, like I've really had a hard time coming to terms with that. It's like, I get it. It's said the monkey mind takes over and says, fuck that. Right. <laughs> you know, cause it, cause the inner child feels under attack. So, you know, it's, uh, th that's, that's been one for me and it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, it's one of the, one of the recognitions I've had is that I am great at holding space for other people in a coaching place within the confines of the home it, 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 it's a struggle for me sometimes so this is a this is something else so you know I, I don't know you know it, it's interesting because I've recently gone back to the the core wound of you know my mother leaving as you know at the age of four and understanding that that separation and not getting that comfort that I needed plays a big part in it but it's it's been taking me back to past life stuff and you know I'm just ready to to really release this, you know, on this level, and I'm really hoping it doesn't come back on a level, level because I'm sick of this one. <laughs> you know, honestly, I'm, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm grateful for the lessons and I, I know I'm handling them so much better than I used to, you know, like I'm, you know, really out of the deep level self-sabotage. Uh, I may be a little obstinate and hard headed at times, but you know, that's name of the game some days. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that, that's, that's where I'm at. So, you know, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Okay. So while you were talking, some past life stuff started flashing for me. So let's, let's take a look. Let me, I'm just going to go and take a look at past life stuff here for a minute. So bear with me a second while I just tap in because there was the piece that you were talking about around letting go. And I had a fl past life flash where it was wartime and you and your love, and I'm, it's flashing back and forth as to which partner you were in the relationship. It doesn't matter is what they're telling me. And you and your love were in a wartime scenario where you had to separate in order for you to get to safety. And that there was a promise that you would come back together 
if you let go now and the other person didn't make it, they died. And so that's where some of that core wound of letting go is coming from for you. You were like, nope, you made the promise that you would be there and then you died and, and I'm not letting go of anything ever again, especially not something I love, right? So, so that is one thing that's coming up. Um, <clears throat> and then the, so there's this, uh, okay, so no, they're saying stick with this one. Okay, so, so we're going to, the, the past life piece, the key to getting past that is to recognizing that that person is still part of your soul family. They never actually left you. They're still there. In fact, oh, ha, ha, okay. Yeah, they're telling me that, that Cassie is that person. That's your, your current partner, right? So, and that, that you guys got back together in this life to, to be able to sort of rectify that, right? And so, you know, there will be other lives where you're different people to each other and you'll still be together, right? It, it's, you know, this is, this is the stage on which we all act in our parts. And then we go home and be actors and, you know, in our soul families. And so, you know, we go have the cast party after, after hours, right? <laughs> after the, after the life is over. And so, you know, this person's in your soul family. They're, they're an actor in your, in your performance every time. So, so when you can take it to that level, then that, that sense of loss can be mitigated, right? So, it, there, so you have the same problem that a lot of people who are very gifted and very smart have. So you have high energetic gifts, high intuition, high access to the astral, blah, blah, blah. But you're also really smart. And really smart often means really attached to this reality because you spend all the time analyzing it and checking it out and, and making sure everything's done and looking for the patterns and looking for the details. And la, 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 la. There's a lot of investment in this reality because your brain runs a mile a minute trying to categorize everything and codify everything and so on. So the smarter you are, the harder it is to let go of reality. <laughs> Because, because you're really attached. And, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why your your soul trip had you doing so many drugs is because it helped you let go of reality back in the day. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, so, that yeah. makes sense. Um, and so your your challenge is in coming out of the story of the past life, right? So the past life story is still hanging out in your energy because you are attached to the reality. And so for you, as much as I'm like, yep, it was a story, it, you're still with this person, they haven't left you, you know, whatever, um, the, you're still holding the emotions because you're still attached to the story because you're still attached to reality, right? And so for you, this is gonna be a longer term fix. It's not a quick fix, like it might be for somebody, sometimes just bringing something to awareness and going, oh, this is what happened. They go, oh, oh, that makes so much sense, right? That's not gonna be the case for you. For you in this case, this is going to be moved by, by being able to, to recognize that this, is an illusion, that life is an illusion. Because when you can really accept that life is an illusion, then none of this will matter, right? None of it's gonna, gonna make a difference because it's all just a part we're playing and an experience we're having and you know, we're just exploring what it's like to be in this massive VR game called Earth, right? And so the that's going to be the piece for you that's really going to move this, okay? In the interim, you know, a lot of this is, so Byron Katie's The Work is the bomb, right? And I think based on some of the conversations you and I have had in the past around, you know, what this is regarding and, and how it's playing out and whatever, um, being able to not take it personally because it isn't personal. It's not about you. You're, you're like, you know, 
I'm, I'm, I'm last in line or I'm second choice or I'm whatever. Right. But the recognizing that, you know, you have fe different feelings for different people and it doesn't mean that it's because one person is better than another. It's just, you have different feelings for different people. Right. And so, you know, or the same feelings for different people, right. That, that can also be true. Right. Be like, Oh yes. You know, I love this person dearly, dearly. I love that person dearly. One love does not impact the other. Right. And they're just, they just are right. But when you can start to say these things aren't about me, right. Uh, when you say this isn't about me, then you can start to release it. And when you go, but it is about me, you know, because I know that's how the brain goes, right? It's stubborn, right? That's when you take and you do Byron Katie's the work. You do the four questions, right? And you, you're like, okay, is this true? Can I absolutely know it's true, right? <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, what, what purpose does it serve for me to believe you know, this is your question. What, what purpose does it serve for me to believe that this is true? Because believing that this is true is just me playing out my childhood story again. And, you know, you've, you've gotten back in touch with your mom. Oh, we never, we never lost touch. I mean, even though, you know, she, yeah. she separated at a young age, you know, we've always been very close, but that definitely very much mimics everything that has played out in this life and obviously ties back into that yeah. past have life. You, yeah. Have you talked to your mom about why she left? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you had me do the divine mother goddess work last year and you said this is going to be one of the most powerful pieces of work or it was going to screw me up immensely. <laughs> it was it was your words exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so I immediately yeah, went I went to her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I I, I went to her and uh, you know, and, and then spoke with her. And yeah, and I, I've known it for a long time because she was always very open about why she had to leave. Um, you know, uh, you know, and, and even though that alleviates it, you know, that, that it, it, every time I seem to clear a level, a, a deeper shade of this seems to, to come around, if that makes sense. Yep. I did the same work with my dad. So not surprising. Um, yeah. So, you know, the, the next stage of the work for you is to put yourself in the position of your mother to really be able to stand in her shoes and see life from her perspective as a human, not as a parent, but as a human. And to really be able to look at that and say, oh, okay, yeah, you know. So my my big thing with my dad was, you know, she, he, he never really wanted kids. My mother hammered that into me my whole life. And, you know, he he took on a, a you know, he, he got married to a woman who also had two kids. And so he took on a family. So clearly he didn't really hate the idea of kids or else he wouldn't have married her. Right. But, you know, I always got the impression he would have been happier without children, <laughs> you know. And, you know, I'm in my life now. I'm I don't want kids. I've never wanted kids. Right. And so now I can understand what that's like. And then, you know, I also understand I've, I've lived with a friend who had a child and, and I understand what it was like to take that on, however temporarily, and the, the pleasures and, you know, pains that come along with that. So, um, you know, I understand my dad at a deeper level now, right? And so this is where you start to correlate the human to the human experience, to your experience, right? And be able to understand your mother from a different perspective because, you know, we, at some point in our lives, we have to change our perspective from this is my parent to this is another human being, right? And that helps us to understand at a deeper level. And then there's the other piece of, you know, the, the blame piece of, and the shame piece, right? The blame is shame that we do um, around, you know, well, I wasn't good enough to keep you here, which is where kids go with it, right? Um, it's not logic, but it's kid logic, right? And so, you know, being able to, to stand in that and, and be able to comfort the child and be the parent who will never leave to that child, right? Because you will never leave yourself, right? So, you know, there's all these pieces and parts that go into it. But, okay, so is that everything from that past life? Yes. Is there another past life to talk about? <sighs> Oh, okay. So they're showing me the the dunking chair for witches. Um, 
and they're showing you being killed for your gifts in a past life. Okay. This was during the purging that happened in Europe. Um, and so this is coming back to your fear of your own gifts, right? It's the, it's the fear of your own power, right? Um, the, now how does this play into this? Hold on. Let me ask. Let me find out. Okay. So yeah. So at its core, so there's the fear of letting go, which is that one past life. But then there's also the fear of loss, which is, it comes out of this life and, you know, from the vestiges of that life. And, and what they're saying is that this is also playing into that fear of loss. It's a, you know, I heard somebody talk about it. Edward Mannix talked about it as a persecution complex, persecution, no imprint, persecution imprint is what he called it, which happens to a lot of us who are spiritually oriented and, you know, we have this fear that we'll be killed for our gifts again, right? And so for you, though, this isn't about the fear of your own, you know, being killed for your gifts. Although, I mean, it, it, I don't feel like you have not cleared that as my point, right? You've, you've looked at that and you've cleared it. But the the thing that's showing up is that persecution imprint. It's that, you know, there's a... There's the, okay, I've got to die for something. So, you know, you, you don't get out of this life alive. Might as well be for this. If that's going to be the case, that's fine. You know, which is the getting out of the fear of it happening right now. But then there's the persecution imprint, which you really have played into in your past with the, the feeling under attack and things like that. Um, and so those two things go together for you. And... There's this inherent victimization energy that you and I have talked about before, yeah. right? Where it's the, you know, everything's coming to get me. I'm always under attack. I'm always at risk. When's the other shoe going to drop? This can't be good. I have, nothing works out for me, you know, da, 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 right? So, you know, this is, this is one of your core wounds, right? So the, 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 not being able to let go the persecution imprint on these are core wounds. And so I want to be clear. We're going to talk about it today. We're going to do some work on it today, but you will see this again. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is not going to be done today because it is a core wound for you. And so, you know, core wounds show back up periodically, right? You know, I had a, an interaction with somebody in my theater group who I had only met once and he had like been angry at me for something that I didn't do, but he didn't know that. And so my only experience of him was anger coming at my face. And so I was really worried about working with him and then he came in and made choices in the first read of Brown anger and all of my stuff, my, my stuff from my dad being, you know, raging came up to the surface and I was like three years old <laughs> and I'm in tears. And he's like, Whoa, Whoa, I'm sorry. What's going on? I'm like, I need, you are unsafe right now. <laughs> Right. And, you know, sometimes shit just comes out of nowhere. Right. It just comes out of nowhere. And so, you know, I didn't expect to be three years old in that moment. I didn't expect to be in tears. I didn't expect to not be able to hold my ground in that moment because he triggered the crap out of me. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I had built it up. And so, yeah, I didn't expect any of that, you know, because that normally isn't a problem. People can be angry at me all the time and I don't have a problem with it. Right. But, you know, this stuff, when it's core, when it's foundational, it can show up again on a regular basis and it will show up again because it's some of the core work, right? So, you know, my core non-important button, I, I worked it for years, probably 20 years before it actually has subsided to a point where it's almost non-existent at this point. Right. Um, but it takes time to dig through all of that. So I just, I want you to be aware that we're working on it, but it will come back around. This is a spiral and your core issues are spokes on the spiral. So each time you come back around, you'll hit that spoke again at a deeper level. Okay. So, all right. Let's, let's look in your energy field too, for this. Let me see what's going on inside of you because you're feeling a little stirred up and let's, can I, can I come into your Absolutely. Field? Absolutely. Okay. Hold on. Let me, let me just hop in there and see what's going on here. Um, hmm, okay. 
So you do have some things swirling around you. No surprise there. That's a surprise to you. Yeah. <laughs> <Just saying that. laughs> yeah, you do have things swirling around you. A part of that's because you kind of like it. There's there's something you're you're getting something out of that. There there's I, I think to it. there's a recognition that I came to in the last few months that not all dark is bad, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. And yeah, it, it took me a long time to get there. Up. You know, we had talked about some of the past life stuff that, you know, I've brought in certain things that work with me, with me. And I really shunned that side of myself. And I still, you know, don't use, you know, things for much, but <laughs> they're there for protection. Yeah. Yeah. So, they like you. Yeah. <laughs> they like me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good. Because, you know. Because you, yeah. ki yeah, you kick the shit out of them. <laughs> there is that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, they're, they're not giving me a hard time. They're just circling. So, okay. Now, the thing to keep in mind, though, that when you have things circling in protective mode, they're going to attract things that are going to attack because the the manifestation is there. What you focus on is what expands, right? So if you've got things circling you to defend, then that's, you know, things that, that are looking for places to attack are going to be attracted to the things that are ready to defend, right? So just be aware of that. That's interesting. Do you see anything with my shield? Because I just did a working the other night. It's my first working of, of this type. And I just want to see what you see, if it, if it relates to some of what I was doing. Okay. You did a working on your shield or you did a working in general? A working in general based on higher level auric and self-protection. Okay. I'm just first checking to make sure that it's solid. Yeah. Okay. So it's solid. I'm seeing sort of a crystalline structure on the, not on the outside, but it's in there. It's not the outside layer, but it's in there. And it's, it's glowing. I'm, I've got a golden glow and with some pink around the edges. So let me see. Sometimes I can tell what's in the shield, sometimes not, depending upon how you structured it. So I, I would have to trigger it to identify sometimes, and I don't want to do that. So <laughs> I can protect myself, but I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm tired. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. early. So let me uh, let me see what I can discern from the outside. Oh, okay. So my sense is that. The crystals are almost acting like teeth. They're like chewing. Like like when you touch the, the shield, it like sucks you in and chews you up. That's sort of the energy that I'm getting from it. You know, not like they're chompers, but they're they're grinders in that. And yeah, it's like it turns you into liquid and, and then not liquid, but like silly putty, right? And then grinds you up. Not a pleasant experience. I don't recommend it. Uh, yeah, that's as far as I can get without triggering anything. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, 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 field, right? yeah. Um, that I wasn't that aware. For you? Yeah, that does line up, yeah, especially the, the goldness, the, the crystalline structure. It was, you know, just, a just trying different things. You know how it is <laughs> trying different mm -hmm. things. I, I, you know, yeah. we had talked about shields before and I had walled myself up and my property up so much that I was stagnating with inside those structures that I created. So I've been trying to, you know, find, you know, a little more yeah. movement and yeah. Yeah. Breathing space. Yeah. I talked to somebody, I don't remember who it was now. One of the people on my coaching calls, I think my brain is done uh, <laughs> this week, but somebody said that they had set their their shields on their property and they hadn't seen any animals on the property for the entire summer so far. And, and they just started seeing some animals in there and, and they were like, well, what's that about? I was, I was like, do you have a garden? And she's like, no, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, okay, well, you know, maybe it's that your the animals were going to eat your bushes and eat your stuff. And cause you know, 
they set it with the intention to um, to only have things with positive intent be on the land, right? Or nothing with negative intent, I think, it was how it was phrased. But, but yeah, I'm like, hmm, yeah, if, if they were going to destroy your plants, that would have been a reason for the, the wards to keep them off the property. And maybe they have enough food now that they're not going to destroy your plants and so they can come on the land now, right? <laughs> they're getting food in other places that now that other people's gardens are coming in, right? So, you know, words are funny things. You have to be careful how you language them and because they'll they'll create their own problems if you're not careful with it. I my the first year I I put my words up in Richmond, the uh I I, I couldn't grow anything because I forgot to let the fairies on the land. So <laughs> everything I planted died. And I'm usually better at keeping things alive than that. So I was like, "Mm, what did I do?" <laughs> so, okay. Okay, so you're resetting that. Let's let's talk about this persecution imprint for a minute. Let's let's sit with that for a minute. We're looking at there's this righteousness energy that comes out of this. Yeah. So anytime you're feeling righteous, you're in your victim. Okay. So righteousness feels really good it feels very like almost empowering but it's empowerment out of victimhood and so really it is this place of spreading this hate and discontent and and this powerlessness righteousness is powerlessness externalized it's so, uh interesting you say that because my ancestors have been telling me lately do you want to be right or do you want to live in harmony and i was like can i do both <laughs> Not all the time, no, they said. No. <laughs> no, they, no. And, uh, yeah. Sometimes, so that, but yeah. Not, yeah. Usually not when you really want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The more you want to be right, usually the more it's the time to let it go, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing Elsa in the background. So, <laughs> let it go, let it go. Oh. He's looking confused. So. No, that, that that took me down a whole symbolic library of shit in this life again. Yeah. So I yeah. use, yeah, it's so. funny. Yeah. So there's, so this goes back to, we did the episode on Spirit Sherpa called The Victim in the Misery Box, right? Mm -hmm. And this goes back to that place. It goes back to that being in love with your misery. Okay. And so this is about being in love with your righteousness and it's not just about being right it's about being righteous right it's having been victimized having been abused having been you know abandoned whatever and being being able to stand up and and it's really about getting attention for your victimness right it's, it's been about a having somebody acknowledge it it's really play. I think the righteousness piece has really played up more since I did the deep level identity and solar plexus work, right? Like, uh, you know, learning to balance that, you know, balance that chakra with not being overactive and really like, rah, you know, like I, you know, like I am right. And this is, this is the only way. And this is the way it has always been. And, you know, and, and, you know, falling into more of a, a will without, control if that makes sense does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah 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 so this is about learning how to surrender damn it right? will without control <laughs> is surrender right yeah. so surrender is you know you you pick the river that is going in the direction you want to go and then you take your freaking paddle out of the water and let it take you there right it's it's about that. The challenge for you is letting go of this righteousness. There's, there's this piece of needing to feel witnessed in your pain. That's what the, is fueling this. This okay. has been a major part so, of the relationship issues, you know, for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So are you feeling unseen or are you not speaking your truth? You know, both, you know, I, I feel that, you know, f for one, I didn't establish as the divine masculine firm boundaries early on in the relationship. So 
when those boundaries started, you know, like I was, I was talking about this in a Facebook live earlier and the, the way I see the container and I saw the cracks in the energy of what I was holding and that allowed the feminine essence to seep from it and seek shelter container, whatever it is in, in other directions. So, you know, there's that piece and right. You know, what was the other, what was the other piece you said? So I said, are you feeling unseen or are you not speaking your truth? So I, I didn't speak my truth into my boundaries. And I just recently started saying this, this is exactly how I feel. Um, mm -hmm. But the feeling of unseen and unheard has put a, a harsher edge on my tone than I would really like when I look back at the things, right? You know, like when I, when I look mm -hmm. back, I'm like, you know, I could, I could pull into the heart space more and not be so in the head with it. Um, if that makes right. sense. Yeah. The oftentimes when we go into our heads, when we come out of traumatic backgrounds, you know, when we go into our heads, it's because we're trying to manage our emotions with our thoughts rather than feeling them because the feelings are too big. Okay. So this is one of those reminders that your feelings need to be your feelings and that you need to speak them from your heart, not from your head. Because when we go up into our heads, especially if we're smart and we have all these things, we will just make connections until the cows come home. We'll be like, and this, 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 because mind on overdrive, and we can make so many connections, and all of this plays in together. And look at this big web of stuff, right? And and you know, you were actually originally starting with ouch, right? <laughs> you you were starting with ouch. I don't feel seen. I don't feel heard. And then you go up into your head, and you're like. You know, you explode it into a million different things, right? Um, and then you come up with all these examples of all the ways in which this has played out for the last year, two years, whatever. And, you know, like, and this and that and that and that. And then the other person starts to feel really just like shot at, like bang, 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 right? And instead of just you saying, hey, I don't feel like you're hearing me, right? Which is, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling like you're seeing me. This is how I'm feeling, and, you know, not... Here's all my evidence of, you know, justification for my feelings, right? That is very accurate to how I respond. And, you know, and it's it's really just in romantic relationship, you know, like it doesn't show up in any other place in my life. And I, you know, like talking about the past life thing before, it's because, and, and you know, like, you know, that it, you know, we're both Scorpio, so you know the control issues that come with just making manifest during that time, you know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's that control piece for me too you know it's like if you just see it i have all of the evidence here instead of dropping right. down and i you know it's it's been really the last three months you know like in in coaching it's so much easier for me to empathize to be with because nobody's really hurting me or attacking me <laughs> right. you know but but when it's the the person i'm not you're not in a yeah, you're not in a personal relationship, even if they are attacking you, right? You know, it was it was the so book it's that about you as a coach, not you as a person, right? Yeah, and, and when you know, like I, I really became hyper aware, or just you know aware on a deeper level of all the criticism that I used to throw out to my partners. You know, like it was actually the book, the uh, the Gay Hendricks book you just recommended, The Big Leap. You know, brought me to a lot of recognition about you know, what, what's going on there. You know, there's a lot of great relationship stuff in there too. Um, but yeah. yeah. Well, and John Gottman did some research and he wrote a book about the four horses of the apocalypse for a marriage, so for a relationship. So, and one of those is criticism. So, you know, those, that's, that's a big thing. We were actually talking about that on my, well, to the woo call last yesterday. So we had a lot of conversation about criticism yesterday and, you know, the, a lot of the criticism that people put out is about trying to be in control. And, you know, sometimes it's a learned pattern. If you had a parent who was very critical, then you develop these neuronal <laughs> pathways and you had two, okay. And you develop these neuronal pathways that say, you know, did I check this? Did I do that? Did I do this? Da, 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 da. Because these were the questions that were inherently just like battered at you over and over and over again. Did you turn off the light? Did you take out the trash? Did you do this? Did you do that? Right. And so those, those aren't actually even about the person that you're asking the questions of. It's just about getting it out of your head because it's just like running in this constant anxiety loop because, you know, it's like, that's the neuronal pathway that is, is grooved hardest. Right. And so, you know, 
a lot of criticism becomes it shows up as you know these these questions that you might ask a child but you would certainly not ask an adult right did you turn off the light you know that's kind of a obnoxious question to ask an adult so things like that but yeah so the 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 communication is important right and so um there's a a Hold on. They're, they're talking. Make me a second. What is it there? Okay, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what they're telling me. I'm just going to keep talking. They'll 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 drop it in wherever it's supposed to be. The um the thing that I would say is that the biggest challenge when you're in this sort of scenario is that you will often look at the other person as an, the enemy. You'll look at your partner as the enemy. It and takes me a while to talk It takes me a while to pull out of that. Uh, it does, you know, like I yeah. you know, I I have to, you know, full responsibility that is absolutely how i perceive it you know even even with all of the work you know once it's like it, it's it's ingrained in there so deeply and because of some harder relationships i've had in this life too where that was you know i was in some very you know i was in a very abusive relationship myself you know you know actually while well, i was in welcome to the woo so it's like you know to see the the differences in my partners it, it it's hard you know because when that when that when that trigger hits that button gets hit which is my button not anybody else's button you know for me it's it's you know it's like ever you know it's hard not to think though it's hard not to think the whole world is the enemy and and I, this also goes back to the years of stimulant abuse and trying to unwind that the you think the mind runs on overdrive now you should have seen it when i was up for five or six days at a time and you know like having demons stand in 10 foot tall form in front of me because I was blurring the lines of reality on a deeper level that most will never see in the physical reality, <laughs> you know? So, you know, like these, yeah. these things, you know, they left imprints, uh, implants, you know, that <laughs> as well that, you know, have been yeah. tougher to, to pull or to find. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So there's, there's a, uh, a tool I'm going to give you for communicating that when you're seeing your partner as the enemy, your job is to be able to express your upset in a way that is not, a, a, you know, aggressive, right? And so the way you do that is you remember that you love the person. And you remember that they love you. And you're not allowed to say anything to them until you have out loud told them three things that you love and appreciate about them. And it's, when you can do that, it will remind you that they are not the enemy, right? And it will keep them from being defensive or as defensive when you say what you need to say, which is what you're upset about. And it will, because you remember they're not the enemy, because you've reminded yourself and them that you love them, now you will say it differently than you would have said it before, which will also make it easier for them to hear, right? Because it does not serve you. The, the purpose of any clearing between people is to come back together in love, right? To come back to love, right? And if you don't want to come back to love with someone, then the clearing is simply an abuse. There is no point in having a clearing conversation with someone who, is a, who, is, who you think has done you wrong, if you're not trying to come back into relationship, if you're done with them, just be done with them. Walk away. Right. Yeah. And that's There's no point that conversation except to create more hate and discontent. And that's, that's been the, the struggle with, you know, it's so f funny how things come full circle. I just saw a full circle in my head, but also the lights on my head. Yesterday she left for vacation on a cruise for eight days. And I, you know, I, I'm working with that sock monkey Oracle deck and it said nostalgia 
you know, it was about taking a look back and I looked at my Facebook memories and it was a year to the day that I proposed to her. <laughs> and, you know, and it was like, man, that's tough. It, 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 it was, it's tough. It's tough for me. Um, yeah. To see. But, you know, yeah. But in a year, you never set a date. Correct. You know, there's, uh, it, most there's, people are married within the year after their engagement. So, you know, there's something in there where you never set the date. So there was something in there where you, you were not fully in or else that date would have been set. Yeah. I think that, the shades of that on both sides, you know, um, yeah. You know, I think we're both. Oh yeah. It would have to be, or else she would have been <laughs> bugging you to set the date. She know? begged me, yeah. she bugged me to, to, to propose. You know, I think yeah, but neither one of you has said a word to me in the, in the intervening year about setting a date. So, you know, you know, we, uh, I think we were so caught up in the struggle, you know, of getting a spiritual based business off the ground and working together in course creation and not fully understanding when you write your own courses, how deep that, you know, using, using certain energies and certain classes you know, how, how much a deeper that feeling is of, of being in the energy of that, you know, and, and not knowing that you got to go through a deeper level than your students, which go through a lot of own. And then, and then doing three classes back to back to back to back on top of, you know, woo squared and on top of spiritual coach certification on stop on top of starting a metaphysical store, you know, on top of, yeah. you know, on top of, on all top of things. all the things. <laughs> yeah. So this is the, this is the piece. And this is why focusing is so important for you, you know, not splitting your focus. And this is something we've talked about a lot over the years is not splitting your focus and being, being solid in one direction. Um, you know, especially for your business and not having multiple different things going on because that just fritters your energy. But yeah, the, the basically your personal life took a back seat to your business life and your, your personal growth life, your, your, your relation, I should say your relationship took a backseat to that. Um, it did. I mean, you said personal growth work and things like that. You had said something a couple months ago, you know, when, when all this was going on, it was like, you know, when we begin to see our partner as just a piece of furniture and, you know, forget. And that was, that one hit so hard for me. So very hard <laughs> and trying to recover from that has been tough for me. It's, it's been tough, you know, the recognition piece and the recognition that that was a major turning point into what manifested into the relationship afterwards in regards to feeling safe and secure for her based on a lot of what she has gone through in life and not holding that set safe masculine container because I just feel like everybody can push through because that's what I've done most of my life, <laughs> you know, and not fully understanding that. Yeah. Well, and pushing through is not necessarily always the answer, right? Because sometimes when we push through, we also tear things open. So, you know, it's, it's like, mm, maybe not so much for that sometimes. Um, you know, sometimes you just got to buckle down and do it. You know, if, if you're in an avoidance resistance, you just got to do it. But sometimes you, you wait for things to evolve and let them move of their own accord, which is part of the surrender process. So yeah. as much as you're going, you know, you could just buckle down and push through the other person's going, or you could just let things be and, and let them evolve and let them go where they're meant to go. And you're like, but no, I know where I want it to go. Right. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, is I don't really think I did, you know, and that's the, that's yeah. the thing I was just creating for the sake of creating to get something moving right with no really real long-term vision. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Pieces and parts come together as that evolves, as yeah. you know, you put, you know, energy into it, into the universe, but there was no real direct, you know, I was like, this is what we got to do because, you know, and it, so much of it's related to, you know, like poverty complex and, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, you know, like, it's like, we're, you know, like, what are we going to do? <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, we're behind on the mortgage. It's like, you know, we need to, we need to create and, you know, and, and but there's yeah. half ass energy in it. <laughs> right. You know, so. Inherently because it's created out of panic. 
Right. And when you create out of panic, you create more panic, right? Right. That's the challenge. So, okay. So let's, I feel like we're, we've been sort of all over the place. Let's sort of bring this together and, and come to a point of completion here. So plan for going forward. Okay. So you guys are still cohabitating. Things are in flux or not in flux? Oh, well, she's on vacation right now. So, sure, you know, but when you come, when she comes back, I know we're not t uh, talking a lot at this moment, you know, like okay. decided to spend, you know, this eight days or, you know, a significant part of it, you know, just not in contact. And I think, you know, it's okay. part of the clearing, you know, part of getting ready for what could be, um, you know, right. I, there's, okay. there's well, so much up in the air and in inner turmoil with me about the letting go. And, you know, am I choosing a harder path if I let go or it can, you know, can I repair the container and move forward? You know, like these are the, these are the things that I've been feeling, right? Like what is the, what is the way, you know? Okay. So I'm going to change that question for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because what is the harder path is still in that victim, that, that persecution complex, right? It's like, am I going to pick the path that's going to screw me over? Right. That's, it's still in that. Right. So the question isn't what path is the right path. The question is, what would I love? Right. So what would I love? Would I love to be with this person and have things work out? Would I love to be on my own and have the space to do that? Would I love to be in a different relationship? You know, what, what would I love? Right. And from that place to make the decision, right. Not from a place of what, what would I hate and let's avoid it. Right. You know, because that's, that's back into that persecution place back into that victim place. It's like, Oh, am I going to sabotage? Am I sabotaging myself? Right. You're, you're asking that question of, am I sabotaging myself? Well, you know, I, I have had that. Yeah. I, I, I ask that and I, I do absolutely hear what you're saying. You know, I do have that self-sabotage cycle that has been a very much a part of my life. So I, I do have an a, awareness of it. I mean, that's, this doesn't necessarily feel like that. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. more of learning a deeper level of what unconditional love is and also learning a deeper level of what boundaries are um, for me. Yeah. And, and so, you know, unconditional love goes in both directions, outwards and inwards, just as a reminder. Okay. And, you know, if, if unconditionally loving someone else damages you, then it's not unconditionally loving yourself too. That was a hard recognition over the last month as well. Yeah. So just, just keep that in mind. And the, the goal is to balance the two. That's the yin yang, right? Coming into the balance of the masculine and feminine energies within yourself, as well as with, with others. And, you know, we, we all want to be able to be unconditionally loving without being in pain from things. But if you're not there yet, acknowledge that truth and love yourself enough to, to take yourself out of pain. Right. You know, will you get there? You may not get there in this relationship or you might, you know, it just depends on, on where you are with it. But if it, if it is causing you massive amounts of pain and nothing you are doing is making it better then you know, remove yourself from the situation so that you can find a path that doesn't require you to splay yourself and, and, you know, eviscerate yourself to get the shadow work done. Right. You know, there, there are kinder, gentler paths and you will recreate this relationship in anew until you are done with it. Right. That's just how these things go. Right. And so, you know, I'm just saying. No, you know, no I appreciate options, I appreciate right? that. Always appreciate yeah. your full transparency and wisdom. Yeah. So, you know, the every relationship is a workshop. That's the nature of relationships, right? And so, you know, we learn how to do things differently within the context of that that relationship. And we we find a way to come together in love, right? That's that's the path. That's the goal. And, 
you know, some relationships, some workshops suck more than other, <laughs> others, right? <laughs> some are harder than others. And so the thing that I'm going to say to you in practical measure on this one is focus on what you appreciate about her. Okay. So that when she returns, you can be in a non-critical state. Okay. Because whether you stay together or not, being in that non-critical state will make the, the, if you break up, it'll be, it'll put you in a position where you're in a place where it's not going to be bitter and miserable and you'll be able to stay friends. Uh, and if you do stay together, it is the, you know, it could serve as the foundation of getting back together. But either way, we, we talk about this all the time. Gratitude is the attitude, right? And so, yeah. You got to be grateful for your partner. You can't can't just be focused on the things that they did that sucked or the things that they're not doing or whatever, right? You got to be grateful for them. I you know, I had that happen with my husband yesterday. He put rain on the windshield and I was so grateful because I was r driving in in the rain. And then I got there and he had moved the basket that had the the uh, umbrella in it to the back of the car where I couldn't reach it and I had to get out in the rain and be soaked. And so I sent him a thank you after I had found that the, the, the umbrella was missing. I sent him a thank you for the, for the rain -X so that he could have the time that where I was there at the place I was going to, uh, to feel appreciated. And then when I came home, I was like, Hey, can you not move that out of the back seat where I could actually reach it? I got soaked today. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, because otherwise I would have just ignored the rain -X, Right. Because I would have been in whatever the current feeling was, right? So it's important to to give the appreciations. I'm glad you said that again. And I, I have to tell you a funny story because I remember you telling me about the three appreciations. And I, I this is and, and I haven't used it for a while. And I, you know, not to make excuses, but I'm going to tell you a funny story. So I used this on somebody, and you know. And then I, I stated, you know, how I was feeling about it, a certain situation in our former business partnership. And they they blasted me on Facebook saying that I was a narcissist because I was love bombing them and then gaslighting them. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I haven't really used it, that tool since then. <laughs> yeah, that's somebody who was attached to not being in a relationship with you. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't used it since then. I, yeah. That thank, is, thank that you. That is not love bombing. That is. <laughs> Somebody, somebody can't take criticism at all. And so they felt bait and switched and, and like went into their trauma and all the stuff. Right. But that is, that is not the purpose of this exercise, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it, absolutely. It, you know? Yeah. The purpose is to, to let them, you know, that's a big piece. Thank you. That is a big piece lifted. Yeah. A lot of, all of this is a lot to sit with today. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, based on how things worked out in that relationship, I'm not surprised that that's the response that you got because they were very much attached to getting you out of their space. So, you know, spiritual eviction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, you had served your purpose for them and they were done with you. So, you know, they're going to take it that way. So yeah. you, there are some people you can't make happy no matter what you do. And you just need to accept that and leave. Right. <laughs> it's just like, okay, I can't, I'm out. Right. And the more drama they're engaged in, the more that's going to be true. So you can see the drama from the outside, right? So when you can see the drama from the outside, that's a, that's a stay away warning. Because if they're engaging in drama in other places, they're definitely going to engage in drama with you. Yep. So. Life lessons. For thought. School of Earth. Life lessons. Part. Who knew, right? Part how many, I don't know. The reckoning. <laughs> <laughs> the recognition like so okay so do you feel complete i do thank you so much i i, I want you to say i i'm so so grateful for so much of what you shared with me today that really helped bring me to some clarity about some deep level pieces and it's so funny you know like I almost feel like you've told me that piece before, whether it's in a different timeline, different something, but I, I felt, I felt coming back to that battlefield and I felt going the separate ways and I felt, oh man, I'm tearing up now. I felt that pain of that separation. So thank you. Yeah. And you know, 
you may want to let those tears come out because yeah. I feel like that didn't happen in that lifetime. You never properly grieved. And so that, that may be another piece to the release for you. Just so you know. I mean, you've been saying that for that two months too. And I'm like, go, go gadget tears. Now they're coming. Thank you for getting me there. Yep. You're welcome. <laughs> Don't forget the clearing grief audio, um, which we'll link to in the, the show notes, but yeah, that'll, that'll help. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kelly. All right, honey. We'll see you at the next time we record. <laughs> That's right. it for this episode of Spirit Guides. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And remember, what you focus on expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. <laughs> So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh.